nonprofit activity to claim um, to claim the uh, full credit for uh, for any kind of change in society. But we see a lot of evidence that this is working. We see we see the usage of the website is obviously a, a major indicator that a lot of people are using the information and coming back to use more information. We're seeing that the reporting quality of the organizations is improving. There are fewer errors in their in their uh, in the calculation of their financials and their reports to the government, for example, because the information is now mm -hmm. transparent. We're also seeing that the we, that the um, explanations of the work and the reporting of the accomplishments versus objectives is improving. It's it's lar it's in many ways anecdotal, mm -hmm. and 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 you know the, the the one thing that we're looking for over time, maybe that will. Uh, that will really show that this has worked is a set of outcomes such as fundraising costs will start to decline and you can actually chart that. Mm -hmm. we, can't, we can't do that yet, mm -hmm. but we think that will take some years yet mm -hmm. to see that, that happen. That the that underserved markets will, will start to see uh, more relative interest by organizations in serving those markets. Mm. Um, that there'll be some consolidations in markets where there are too many too many services are provided. Um, that the so there'll be some degree of rationalization uh, in it. But that's those are longer, much longer term types of trends that that would depict it. In the meantime, I think the single statistic that says that it's working is that so many organizations voluntarily supply information, information. into it. And those organizations, that's really where where the the crunch comes. Mm -hmm. the, they see value in it, and so they they participate. How many visitors do you get on an average day? Then? About forty thousand oh. uh, in the states uh -huh. uh, come on an average on an average day to that website. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So, for example, say I want to make a donation. I uh, I would log into GuideStar, and then and then what happens next? Can you just sort of take us through the process? Yeah. Well, you you you, you first of all you you have to. You can look for a single organization. If you've been, if if an organization has has called you or written to you and, and asked for money, mm. you can look that organization up and you can find out that yes, it's it's a bona fide organization. It does report regularly and appropriately to the to the government. Um, if it's reported also into the GuideStar system, you might say, well, that's another indication that it wants to be transparent. So that's another. Indication. You'll see its objectives, mm -hmm. its accomplishments. Uh, you'll get some sense of the quality of, of its reporting, and that's also a good indication. But the other thing you can do at the same time is say, well, what, organi what other organizations are doing the same kind mm -hmm. of work? So you might start by looking at a single organization, but then you'd say, no, I'm going to check. If, if say, they say an organization that did child development work in Seoul was, was asking you for money. Mm -hmm. You could then go into GuideStar, look at that organization, and then step back and do a search across the database of all child development organizations mm. in Seoul and start to compare them mm -hmm. yourself. And once I make the donation, can I also find out whether my money has been spent uh, properly? Well, it's, it, it, would be, it would be wrong of me to suggest that you could actually track the result of your contribution. Um, that's virtually impossible mm -hmm. unless it's a huge donation where you can tell an organization to pursue a particular program. I see. Which I wouldn't advise. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't advise you did that. Um, but no, what you can do though is you can look at the organization's objectives, at the promises it's making to you when, when it convinced you to mm -hmm. give your money. Mm -hmm. And then next year, you can look to see how well it did versus those mm -hmm. objectives. Um, so the idea is that you look at your look at your donation as an investment in the in in the work and the promises of an organization, and then you watch that organization over time. And is the organization performing effectively? Do you think is it growing at the w rate you expect it to do? Is it is it uh, becoming more effective in its um, uh, in its financial management? Uh, whatever is important to you, you can start to look for those indications over time. But you're, you, you have to think of yourself as a bit of an investor for this, for this all to mm -hmm. make sense. And ultimately, for the philanthropic marketplace to make sense, we all have to think of ourselves as investors in society. 
But in the case of charity organizations, they uh, once they register with the government, they are automatically registered with you, and it is up to them to provide additional information. It, it, that is the way it uh -huh. works in the United States and the United Kingdom. Um, every country is a little different, oh. and uh, the the um, uh, whether the whether the guide star system in a country can can uh, identify a government vetted list of the registered charities happens in some countries doesn't happen at all I see, whether I see. the government mm -hmm. has such a list mm -hmm. happens in some countries doesn't at all some countries are highly complex uh, India for example where there is registration in some states and not others where there where the tax authority has some information on the largest nonprofit organizations um, where there are literally hundreds of thousands of organizations that are more informal that operate in the countryside um, the beauty of this system though is it can it can operate in any of these environments mm -hmm. um, so for a highly sophisticated country like South Korea where there is registration and reporting um, once those reports are publicly disclosable which may not be the case quite yet uh, you can generate a lot of information in in a hurry mm -hmm. and you can create a lot of incentive for organizations to participate in the system uh, but for us but for a country that's less developed in this respect like India mm -hmm. it becomes a framework in which you can start to cobble together these various sources of data and build and build a population of organizations that will then create its own gravity and start to start to establish a an environment mm -hmm. a uh, tradition of reporting over time that's it's a long-term process but we have to get started there are many factors um, hindering one from making uh, these donations and, and I think one of the major factors for uh, us Koreans is that um, we can be suspicious at times as to whether our money is going to the right place, is being spent on what it's supposed to be spent. Uh, I, I guess similar uh, views are found in, in other countries as well. What are people in other countries like <laughs> when it comes to donation and charity? Well, uh, you know, e everybody says, well, we, we'll never have a philanthropic society like the United States. Even in the UK, they mm. say that, you know, mm. and and, and uh, uh, what what we see everywhere is that the the actual percentage of annual income that goes to charity or philanthropy is not as high as the United States, but that there are other traditions invariably mm. in countries where where um, the citizens look after one another, 